When I was a child, I saw a ghost. I was sleeping and my grandma was visiting. She was sleeping in bed next to me. And I remember waking up to a fingernail being drugged up my arm really slowly. Uh, to this day, I won't sleep with my arm outside of a, outside of the covers. And when I opened my eyes, I saw an old woman. She had a long, straggly gray hair. I tried to yell at my grandma to wake her up and have her help me, and I couldn't. The old woman covered my mouth so that I couldn't scream. And the more I tried to yell at my grandma, the more she covered my mouth and my, my chest. I remember her hands being very cold. I was terrified. I have no idea how long it lasted, but it felt like an eternity. Some of you may recognize the symptoms there of sleep paralysis. Sleep paralysis is when the mind is awake and conscious, but the body is still paralyzed. It's between stages of sleep. And history is full of uh, what's likely the result of sleep paralysis in the form of like artwork and, and uh, uh, scary tales. Things like demons or succubi trying to steal your breath or your soul while, while you sleep, or um, UFOs, aliens trying to abduct you, or mass murderers, or in my case, uh, the witch from Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. That was the scariest thing my young brain could rely on to explain why I couldn't move. Sleep paralysis can help us understand the ways that our minds can construct our reality and that we can fool ourselves. When somebody says, I know ghosts are real because I saw one, I can understand, I saw one too. It's just that now I know that that wasn't actually a ghost. It was a product of my brain trying to explain what was happening. It was a very natural explanation, not a supernatural one. Ghosts could be real, of course, but that's an extraordinary claim. And the evidence for it is often quite ordinary, like my experience. I may know what I saw, but I would be wrong 